is about uh, what is happening in future or what will happen and it analyzes things so when we come to predictive analytics which is a part of advanced analytics or business analytics it deals with uh, decisions about future which is unknown to us but we have the information with us with which we can make decisions it assesses the risk also opportunities for the future so by going for definitions we have with us eric siegel who is the author of predictive analytics the power to predict who will click buy lie or die he is the author of the book he said that predictive analytics is technology that learns from experience or data to predict the future behavior of individuals in order to drive better decisions so basically what he says is that we will be having data with us with which we can predict the uh, patterns or behavior traits of individuals which will help us to drive better decisions or make better decisions uh, first if you're seeing from a customer point of view uh, if you're going to big visa for example the paying counter they'll be asking for a phone number uh, while we, while they enter a phone number they can see they have a, we'll be having a card with us or something and they'll have the details so they'll be having our uh, patterns our behavior patterns consumer patterns with them with which they can uh, do better decisions they'll be sending us offers via whatsapp or sms whenever there's a sale or offer going on they'll be sending us offers or products related to that product or what we have been uh, buying so it helps in uh, decision making moving on uh, it's a definition from uh, german sanchez trills who is ceo and co-founder of scaling information technology and services he says that predictive analytics is the combination of different techniques and fields basically the purpose is to predict some future event based on past historic events if we compare it with google analytics that's just studying the data with predictive analytics there's not only the predictive element to its problem solving so what he says is that it has a various fields and techniques along with it so we know that predictive analytics includes statistics but it also involves decision making that is a skill of the individual who is applying it so if you're just using the data and we'll be updating it to google analytics what it uh, what happens there is that they'll be studying the data they'll be giving results like how many percentage of men if the uh, females are there in the data what is the statistical percentage they'll be studying data they won't be giving us a result or an uh, elements that which help us to make decisions which will be possible with predictive analytics as it uses both software and mathematical uh, equations so here we can see about the role of analytics in decision making if we can see that when there is no analytics involved we can see that the amount of data required is very small well while moving on with descriptive analytics we will be having a little more information that is there is an ascending order of increase in the data required when descriptive analytics we will be dealing with what happened if you are in a customer uh, area that is we have a manufacturing concern and our production is low we'll be looking with descriptive analytics as to what happened for the production to become low or why the supply is not much why the demand is low but with diagnostic analytics we'll be dealing with why the production supply or demand is low what has happened which led to this decision but with predictive analytics we'll be dealing with what will happen and for that the data required you can see in the graph it is more and with prescriptive analytics we will be dealing with how to make it happen that is we have set an objective with predictive analytics and we will be dealing with how to make that happen with prescriptive analytics there is an increase in data in all the uh, four levels of analytics whereas very few data is required in no analytics that is there is no amount of data you will be just studying it and no decision making is there with that so moving on the use of data analytics we can see that predictive analytics is used for decision making in various roles in various industries so the first one we have it is detecting fraud uh, we can uh, deal with the example of credit cards while you are applying for a credit card or a loan the bank will appro uh, uh, while approaching they will be asking for a civil score or they will be doing it while calculating that they will be assessing your risk that is like how many times have you defaulted in paying your emi your credit card payments or uh, previous loans and on the basis of that they'll be assessing whether giving money to you is useful uh, will it be repaid back in time is it a correct decision or not similarly for uh, errors and uh, other fraud behaviors it helps them in using different types of analytical techniques or methods 
which will prevent this uh, fraud behavior or criminal behavior. It can also help in optimizing market campaigns. As you know, while you're purchasing in Amazon or Flipkart, you can see an option at the below that uh, customers have purchased. If you're asking, if you're searching for a journal in the Amazon platform, you can see a different journals and while selecting a particular one of your choice, you can see at the end that customers have also have bought a pen with this along with this journal. You can see as an option. That is what is called as cross selling. So uh, while using this uh, predictive analytics, it helps us to promote cross selling which is the type of behavior that will retain and uh, grow most of their customers because uh, business is understanding what customer needs and what they will require. So on the basis of that, we're helping them. Hello? No issues, we can continue. Okay, sir. Uh, the another uh, use of the predictive analytics is that it's improving operations. We'll be dealing with uh, as I said, the previous example of production, uh, if a particular product, if the production of a particular manufacturing company is less or it is more and the sales is actually less. So you don't have to produce more and keep it as stock. You can produce once when the sale, uh, products that you have sent out for sale is over. There is no need to product, uh, make production and keep it as a, a storage. Here we can, uh, with help of predictive analytics, we can forecast the inventory levels and manage resources. So there's no need of actually producing more and keep it in the storage, hoping that it will uh, be sold off. There's no need of uh, uh, thinking of that sort. You can just produce as and when necessary and manage the resources with predictive analytics and reducing risk. As I said before, the credit scores is an example of this. It reduces risk as well as what we have seen detecting fraud. With reducing risk, you will be knowing like what and all is happening there in that particular person's account and is it necessary that we give the person the amount and will he be repaying back in time so moving along the purpose or techniques that can be used in uh, predictive analytics we can see that regression regression is the mathematical model of uh, equation where you will be uh, representing two or more different variables as with, uh, by a relationship between them we have different models of regression that includes linear regression, the speed choice models, logistic regression, time series models, or survival, duration, also decision tree learning. We'll be learning some of the two or three models here, but not in detail. And moving on, we have another technique known as machine learning. Here in machine learning, what happens is that it is a type of software or an algorithm. We'll be inputting the data into the computer or the software as an algorithm and it uses statistical analysis to predict the output while updating the day output as new data becomes available. As you're all aware of the base theorem when we have studied in economic or statistics, it shows, it says that uh, new information is, uh, as and when is available, you will be updating the probability or revising it as to make better decisions. Same way in machine learning, you will be receiving, uh, you will be having a data set with it new and you will be receiving data that is uh, new or information that is new day by day. You will be updating the data in the uh, uh, by algorithms or in the software so as to get better results. And this uh, software, it is not explicitly programmed to give you the results. It actually is act uh, accurate in nature in predicting the outcomes and you don't have to program it accurately as to give the results. That is, you want the result within the range of uh, 10 to 15 or 20 to 30. You don't have to program it like that. When you enter the data, it will give you the accurate results. So you don't have to worry about the results. And we have uh, machine learning techniques like neural networks or multi-layer perceptron and radial basis functions. So with the opportunities moving on with that, we have customer service options. It enhances customer service. Uh, while approaching a customer service center, you can you have the uh, experience that they'll be calling you and receiving uh, asking for options like is the service good uh, do you have any issues was the customer uh, when the uh, executive was interacting with you in a polite manner did he have patience what is your rating for him even in zomato you have an option of rating the delivery service it enhances the customer service and it is an option for that uh, for that uh, particular entity or the uh, company to uh, give you more particular or good results and uh, in a company, you know that there is employment, employee performance appraisals. 
here what happens is that they'll be uh, watching the employee performance over a month or two months and on that basis they'll be uh, creating a trend or a particular a uh, uh, trait, trait or performance trait of the employee with which they'll be comparing their set standards and they'll be saying uh, like this much standard is what we need and they're performing this much you'll be predicting their employee performance over the month if given a, a if they give awarded a reward or something you'll be you can compare with that or else you can approach them and say your performance is not good we are predicted to be this much level you need to uh, perform more, increase your uh, efficiency. You can provide them with an option and you can uh, give them an opportunity to enhance their performance. As I said with cross selling earlier, uh, predictive analytics it provides an option for businesses to retain uh, customers longer. When you understand what they need and how you can provide them that services, you are actually providing them a great service which will help them, which will make them be loyal to your company, your products and manage risk from fraudulent activity, you can see that uh, credit risk is the main form of risk that is associated with banks. And it also has a certain level of fraudulent activity related to it. So we can see that they'll be very cautious while dealing with certain uh, products with, from the bank. So you can assess the risk and prevent fraudulent activity to a great extent. And uh, you can sell more products and service to existing customers by knowing that if a customer is purchasing a particular product for the past few months, you can know that he'll be purchasing the same for the coming months also. So you can provide him with an options which will help him to uh, retain or buy more products from that same existing event. Uh, while dealing with the limitations or challenges faced by uh, predictive analytics, we have known that big data or data analytics, it is a field or an, uh, a particular area that has achieved more interest in the last past or 10 years. And uh, we have known that these people who analyze the data, they are skilled ex uh, expert professionals. And the qualifications they have is very high and they need uh, experience and all. So since it is an area that has uh, only arisen in the past few, 10 years, there's a, um, there's a limitation or a low a lack of people there's a not actually a number of people. There's a few people who are experts in this area. So acquiring them requires a heavy cost. That is, you will be uh, seeking expert professionals and they'll be uh, very, they'll be asking for remuneration, which is high because they know that they're skilled in that field and only they can perform the particular task we're asking them for. So the cost of acquiring them is very high. And we have known that uh, since it is a field that has arise or uh, received an interest in the past few years, this uh, software also is very costly along with it. So we have the challenge of acquiring an expert and also the software. So another two uh, limitations that we see or challenges that we face with, uh, with that is that not everyone is equipped to deal with data analytics and nor they do have the skills, neither the technology to deal with it. So they'll be having a lack of skill and technology issues over there. And while moving on, we we'll know that there is an over reliance on software results. What happens is that uh, the person who is equipped with uh, data analytics can do the procedure, but a person who is not equipped on that, he'll be relying on the software too much that he can't trust his own experience or his results. So it'll be there's an over reliance on software results, and uh, there's a data analytics process. The first uh, pro step in defining a data a predictive analytics process is that project definition or defining a report. We know that there's a, uh, uh, that's a particular task to be achieved. It is essential that to be specific about what we hope to achieve by implementing a predictive analytics methodology. Before starting, we'll have to set certain uh, ideas or outcomes that we have to be clear. Like what are the derivables that we're expecting from this, what are the inputs we have to be used, and we'll be establishing all the data sources which is available and is up to date with us. In the, uh, and we'll be uh, all analyzing this, uh, we'll be all uh, keeping this in a particular format for the analysis. The second step is uh, data collection. We all know that data collection or predictive analysis is all about using large volumes of data, which is used to get insights about trends or what we do is we'll be collecting the data to stay ahead of the game. That is, 
so that we can predict what they need. Most of the time, the data what uh, is collected into a lake that is not to be confused with the data warehouse, which is there is some significant structural differences. Uh, data lake it uh, contains information in the raw state. That is, it is the raw information. If I'm asking you what is your name, your details, it is in the raw state of information. I have to process it and uh, make it into another form. That is, uh, it can be, we have to structure it. And this uh, range of form it can be structured that uh, forms a data warehouse. The next step is data analysis. Once we all the data is collected and we have the data required for the process, then we'll be dissecting or analyzing the same. This will reveal uh, trends that we are uh, trends that are present there, or it will help prevent fraud, or it will reduce the risk and optimize the processes. Um, the next stage of uh, data predictive analysis is statistics. Statistics is as important as big data when it, it, it comes to implementing predictive analysis. Because it will be testing and validating assumptions. We'll, uh, while we are in the first stage of uh, defining project or defining a report, we'll be having certain assumptions which we want to validate. And here we'll send statistics, the fourth step, we'll be validating it. Here we'll be putting into our effort, putting statistical methods to test and uh, these decisions are made here, but these decisions are not made on hunches. You'll be making the decision on test or numbers. The next step which we come to deal with is modeling. Well, modeling, you will be using existing tools. At, it is best to use existing tools that are a result there. We have programs like Python and R, and we'll be using uh, these existing tools for dealing with this. We don't have to reinvent the whole thing, but then we'll be using the existing techniques to know what is the available options and the ultimate goal to democratize the modeling and how it will be made available to business analysts as well as data scientists. The next step is actually of two parts. One is deployment and another is monitoring. As suggested, once in the modeling stage, we'll be creating a model that is best suitable for our uh, particular project or report. We'll be we'll be uh, giving it to other people to experiment it. That is, we uh, it is not enough to have numbers which show the result, but it will be what should, should should it should show actually what should be best for the company. Unless it is not able to be translated into actionable steps and measurable results, it is not usable. So in the deployment stage, we will be actually using the product and uh, seeing whether the desirable actions or results are being inputted or are we getting or the measure or the results can be measured, etc. Uh, in the model monitoring stage, we can know, we will be monitoring the data. Here it is main focus is that reality is not static neither is data we can know that uh, from the time of uh, data that is a uh, defining the project report or uh, defining the report till monitoring there is a lot of time gap since but within that time a lot of things can happen a model can only be valid for a certain period while the external conditions do not change that is the conditions within which the business is functioning should not change drastically if there is drastic changes or significant changes we have to revisit the models and test them with the new data to us to make sure that they have not lost their significance. This is especially uh, important for those models uh, used for marketing campaigns. The customer preferences and the trends in market actually change within time. So in such a situation, we'll have to revisit and make better changes. Here in our total, the sum up, it means that the sum up here shows that there's a transition taking place from relying on the data reports and the past data towards looking in the future and preparing for it. The market is actually a very competitive place and we'll have to find different methods to uh, make ourselves a position for our company or our product. And we have to rely more on the data than dealing on hunches that my product is actually better than the other products so is actually good. We can't rely on that based on a particular person's opinion or on the base of hunches, we'll have to have data that will help on with us. And the business should understand that there should be opportunities and we should seize, we should see the opportunity and should seize us before the other person is actually ready to take that opportunity. And moving on, 
here we can see that you will be having historical data or the data past data that is within you for the uh, uh let's say for a past one week or a one year you will be using it to enter into algorithms and you will be creating a new model but then <coughs> you'll be having new data set you will be receiving new data as i told previously while setting a model you will be receiving new data and you have to revisit the old model and you have to make a predictive analytics model that is you will be changing the information as and when new information is available you will be updating your model and revisiting it making the changes necessary so that you can make better decisions as we can see that it uses historical data artificial intelligence and machine learning which will help to determine what can happen or what will happen in the future <coughs> the model is then applied to current data to predict what will happen next why why big data matters or why predictive analytics is important because we have known that big data has come to arise in the last past few years <laughs> big data is actually large volumes of data that has come for, that is each sector is a total volume and which requires decisions to be made out of them for example business data at a company might include transaction data sales results customer complaints and marketing information increasingly business makes data driven decisions based on this valuable trove of information <coughs> what actually happens here is that predictive analytics is actually required in a field such as big data so as to make use of the large volume of data and make trends or decisions regarding whatever uh, information the business is dealing with it helps them to make accurate decisions and make uh, use of the cutting edge technology that is available to have its own position in the field. This next point concerned with the predictive analytics is that increasing competition. We know that it is a, a present working environment or business environment is actually with very rich competition and it, it uses different techniques that people are doing whatever they can to make a place of their own, to keep a product, uh, to keep their product in the top market, they're doing whatever they can. And since the competition is very high, what they have with us is that they'll be doing, they'll be collecting data from whatever sources they can and have to analyze better, to see what all they can increase or what all they can do to create better, customer satisfaction or better customer results so with that uh, for that they will be uh, collecting data from the customers and using more for, ac for accurate forecast this will uh, so we have models uh, that deals with decision making uh, so we can see in the diagram that decision tree it is a certain type of predictive analytics model that is used there are various models and one such type model decision models here the model divides the section into certain variables so here you can see two models that is expand uh, two variables that is expand or do nothing here it, it divides it in two branches where each branch shows, uh, shows the choices available within that uh, within that variable here you can expand or choose not to expand if you are expanding there's a probability of gaining a profit of 50 percentage uh, and as an economic contraction of 50 percentage if you are having a probability expansion of 50 percentage you will be having a profit of 50 lakhs dollar 50 lakhs whereas if you have the contraction there is a probability of contraction of loss that is of 30 lakhs dollar 30 lakhs and if you're saying uh, if you're staying as such and you don't think there's a need for expand but there's no need to expand you can just have to stay still and even if you are staying still, there arises a probability of an expansion which leads to a profit of dollar twenty lakhs while staying still by doing nothing. But at the same time, when you're doing nothing, there also arises a probability of, of an economic contraction of fifty percent. That is, a loss of dollar ten lakhs. Here, it is the simplest model. It is as simple as that. You will be having a tree. You will be having uh, certain variables such as market capitalization or price, 
and you can divide that it into certain uh, choices that is into two or three parts or choices as branches which will indicate a particular option where the individual has to make a particular decision and these decisions can be simplified by using them or showing them in a model as such as a decision tree it is actually very useful when you are to make a decision a very short period of time so uh, because you can make it into a flow chart it is actually representing a flow chart or it is a kind of a flow chart and you can make such choices here on the base of that the another model is regression it is more actually the most deployed model in statistical analysis or predictive analytics here we will be using large sets of data and you will be showing a relationship between them as a linear relationship is uh, which shows what and how they are related. Here, it will be used a formula or a mathematical formula uh, equation to represent the relationship between the data. It shows a, part, a particular percentage or a uh, figure that uh, this percentage of relationship exists between two or more variables. Another model is the neural networks. Here, they, uh, it, the neural network is actually a, a small form of the uh, it is a pictorial representation of how our human brain works. Here you can see that these each uh, round balls represent a neuron. That is, uh, complex data can be used with the help of artificial intelligence and pattern recognition. And a small amount of input that is actually uh, being in a, going into the hidden layer and the output layer. It is actually going to different types of here. That is uh, similar to a way a human brain works. That is like you will be having a certain kind of information with you. That is as to like uh, there is a, a function that is happening in five o'clock. You have an information with that, but your brain actually interprets in different ways. It it will be thinking uh, what work will I be doing at five o'clock? Will I be free then? Who are going to attend? Is it possible for me to reach there by five o'clock? Will the traffic be less? Uh, can I record it? Should I have to go? Is it really necessary? A lot of actually input uh, takes there and it will be processing there and you will get a result in the output. Here, yes, similarly, like the way in the brain works, a neural network also work, uh, functions in a similar way and it uses. While our brain does not use artificial intelligence, by neural network uses artificial intelligence to create a relationship and to understand the pattern, to recognize the pattern for making a decision. That is, if the pattern is similar, it helps to make a decision that is easy. It explains or it is useful when there's lots of uh, diffi difficult decisions to make and there's lots of data in between you. But it is, there's no formula to find a relationship between input and output or to make predictions rather than it helps us to come up with explanation. It helps us to explain the process that is happening, though it does not help directly in making a decision. We have tools like free tools like R, Tableau Public, H2O, Anaconda, Rapid Miner, Vika, and Nine Desktop, which helps us to use predictive analytics freely without paying money. Thank you, sir. This is my presentation.